Mr. Hager, thank you for the time today. And a lot of people have been asking if this is your last Bellator fight. Only you would know that. So what's your contract situation? Hi, Steve. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, this isn't my last Bellator fight. Uh, I originally signed to a, a six-fight deal with Bellator at the end of uh, 2017. Uh, so we got plenty more to go. And uh, I'm very happy with Bellator. And uh, they're really giving me everything I need to grow my brand and become uh, a mixed martial artist that they can be proud of. All right. And how has been the balance between All Elite Wrestling and Bellator? How is that working out? It's really incredible. I have, I, have, I have the opportunity to work with two incredible companies. They both understand what a unique situation that I'm trying to achieve and be successful in. And it's really has been eye-opening because five, six years ago when I was with WWE, uh, doing both wouldn't have been possible. Um, they just didn't have the understanding. And uh, Tony Khan at AEW loves it. He just, you know, makes me promise that I'm going to win every fight. Jay Anderson. Hey, Jake. Uh, welcome back. I just wanted to build on uh, kind of that that last uh, topic. I mean, when you signed with Bellator, AEW didn't exist. And, you know, the past year and a bit, the Dynamite's been on the air. It's really taken off. You're a big part of that with the Inner Circle. Was there any ever any doubt about continuing to do both MMA and wrestling on your part? Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate that. This last year with AEW, I really consider like the best year of my career, being able to win uh, two fights with Bellator and then sign with them and to have the year of ratings we've had on TNT. Uh, it really has been special in my heart. The stadium stampede that we did in, uh, in May, one of my favorite matches. Uh, I never doubted that I'd come back to, uh, to fighting. I believe right now I'm 38 years old. I have a unique window where I can really capitalize on something special. Um, we were originally scheduled for May 9th and, um, that we were one of the first cards to be canceled during the pandemic. Since then we've been staying ready and, uh, Bellator never ceases to give me an opportunity. Coming out of that last fight, I mean, it wasn't a loss, but it didn't end the way you wanted it to. What were the takeaways and lessons from that? Absolutely. I mean, the finish alone is a big takeaway for me. Um, this is sanctioned violence, but at the same time, it needs to be controlled. It needs to be like a controlled chaos in there. And you always need to be aware of what you're thinking and what your body is uh, doing. A lot of it needs to be rely on instinct to where you don't think and where you can just react. That way you're ahead of it and you're leading uh, the charge there in the cage. Um, I, I was personally upset about it um, afterwards, but at this point, it is what it is. Definitely lesson learned um, and definitely improved on the areas uh, that, uh, you know, uh, that have cost me. John Carlo. Hi, Jake. I brought up there about being an AEW and them understanding your passion for MMA. Uh, just curious with the pandemic and everything, you're, uh, wrestling weekly it's live so how have you been able to adjust your training for this MMA fight uh, with those responsibilities so I pretty much consider uh, we film twice a week with AEW every other week so I have 10 days off in between that is usually the schedule until like bigger things come on which there's nothing bigger than AEW and Bellator right now <laughs> Um, so I really considered the filming days with AEW as my rest days. Um, and then once I'm home, uh, I really like as soon as I'm home on a Thursday or Friday, I already have practices scheduled and I'll go Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then I'll fly out again Wednesday to go film. Um, it's worked pretty well. AEW has definitely understood, uh, you know, during those rest days that I'm really pushing it and really working hard. And I think they've done a great job to uh, help complement their schedule with mine and uh, allow me to get the time to work out even on those rest days a little bit and like a run, some kind of conditioning. And uh, it, it really has and will show in this fight. And uh, final question for me. Uh, you brought up there about Tony Khan, like understanding and when you were in WWE, this might not have been possible. So what's that conversation like with Tony Khan when you're uh, telling him you have a scheduled fight for this date? And how is he maybe different than what Vince McMahon 
that conversation would have been like with them? Well, the number one difference is the schedule. Um, AEW films, weekly television shows. So it's about 60 to 70 dates a year with the pay-per-views, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. Uh, at WWE, we were running over 200 dates a year. So at times, I'm only home 36 hours. Um, it really is uh, like a complete different schedule where even if I am able to train on those five days that I'm on the road, it's not the same. It's not consistent. Uh, I don't have a coach and some kind of like congruent plan going on. Um, the conversation with Tony, like any conversation, is, is very easy. Uh, he's a great guy. I, I think his leadership really trickles down. He wants good people to work at AEW. So like talking to him is like sitting here talking with you guys right now. It's, it's very casual. Um, he's a very big, uh, sports guy. I think that's why you see so many wrestlers happy to be at AEW because he treats us like athletes. And, uh, it really shows in our work that we're more than happy to, uh, show him how much we appreciate that. Ben. Hi, Jake. Um, I ran into you recently with Chris Jericho, and he was like full of compliments for you as a as a wrestler. And he, but he also said that he, he felt that the WWE severely underutilized you. I was just wondering, do you agree with that? And uh, how have you enjoyed working with Chris Jericho? Oh man, like the uh, not only do I need to thank Chris Jericho, but the entire wrestling world, I feel like, needs to buy him a steak dinner. Um, I always said um, during my time at WWE, it would take one unselfish top guy to change the wrestling landscape. And Chris Jericho is that one unselfish top guy. What he has done is raised the bar and raised the level of everyone around him. I taken everything I can from Chris. I'm always watching him. I'm always learning. It's just such an honor to be able to work with him, to be in the inner circle at All Elite. This last year is some of the greatest work he has ever done. And to have Jake Hager next to that is really, really an honor. Uh, do I feel like WWE misused me? Of course I do. But like nothing I say or do now is ever going to change the past. All I can do is move forward and smile. And sometimes that's difficult, but, you know, when you're winning, uh, it, it, it's not difficult at all. It's easy not to be, uh, you know, upset or still brittle about stuff that has happened. You know, it's time to move on and uh, smile because life is short. And you've been wrestling with a crowd at AEW due to the pandemic. I'm just wondering... A big part of wrestling is the performance and how the crowd reacts. So I'm just wondering, how do you gauge your success as a wrestler without a crowd? And your next fight now, Bellator, will be without a crowd as well. So how do you think that will impact your fight? Yeah, it's definitely been a, a new experience uh, wrestling without a crowd. I'm very eager to see how it is going to be this Thursday at Bellator 250 fighting without a crowd. I think it's definitely... Um, more ne necessary with pro wrestling to have an audience because they are part of the show and it is show business that we're doing with pro wrestling and we need them to react and like you said uh tell us who they like and who they don't like and you know for the most part you usually have a good feel for those types of things um the only thing you have to worry about is when no one's reacting and that's time to move on to the next uh idea uh, I'm really excited to go in there with uh, this Thursday night for Bellator 250 and fight without a crowd because, you know, I'm still very new to the sport and uh, any less distraction for me is, is warranted. It never really bothers me because I have so much uh, experience on live television, uh, but I, I look forward to not having the crowd uh, this week. Donna? Hey, Jake. Uh, I know that you are, you know, you're you're not – super loud about it and talking about it all the time like some uh, fighters are but you're you're a trump guy and, and obviously uh he's you, you said you wanted to be three and oh before he was re-elected looks like that's going to be uh looks like that's exactly what's going to happen for you um are you, are you excited for for next week and do you think he's gonna gonna win that election um i i love donald trump simply because he loves America. He loves the American people. He wants my children to have freedom. He wants my children's children to have freedom. 
And I don't think you could say that about who he's running against. Uh, I would be very excited to be 3-0 and by the time he's reelected. I, I think he's been doing a hell of a job and will continue to do a hell of a job. And America will definitely be better off in another four years from it. Uh, as far as the election goes, uh, I'm, I'm very nervous. This is an unbelievable time that we're living in right now where we can't get uh, straight information and we really have to dig in and find out what's true and what to believe in as the American people because uh, this is the greatest country on earth. Uh, obviously, as well, you know, like we, we mentioned here, you're a, a Republican, but you were definitely willing to to speak to Andrew Yang. You put that tweet out recently about the uh, the award that, that your your former uh, employer had won. What inspired you to to feel that you should make a, a public statement on that? And, and have you had any sort of back and forth with with Andrew Yang? I know that he's he's big in wrestling. He he wants the best for the wrestlers for 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 wrestler pay and things like that. So have you had any back and forth? And what inspired you for for that uh, that message? Um, I, I simply tagged him into that tweet because he had mentioned talking about the independent contractor status and how WWE uh, does that to so many of its roster. So I, I just added him in there because uh, they were talking about, you know, how great their business was. Um, I, I really hope there is change. Um, if, if, I was a, if I was a politician, I would definitely go across the aisle and, and talk to these people. I have no problem with it. Uh, I think Andrew Yang is a, a very young and up-and-comer and has a lot of potential, and I know a lot of people back him. Um, I really hope he can um, – I, I really hope he can create change, but uh, I also wish he was a Republican. All right, and our final question will come from the line of Lenny March. Lenny, go ahead. How's it going, Jake? How are you? Hey, Lenny. I'm good. Thank you. Good, good. Also, uh, AEW, you've been around Mike Tyson. He's been at AEW uh, recently. <laughs> Have you, has there been a chance that you'll be able to kind of learn a few techniques where we stand up with him? So uh, right before that segment happened, uh, we were backstage, uh, you know, during a commercial break, and we're, we're about to go out, and uh, Tyson comes through with his posse, and uh, uh, Rashad Evans was there, Henry Cejudo was there, and so uh, we're just sitting there, you know, talking trash to each other because we're all three, uh, you know, wrestlers. And I was like, I was begging Henry to try and low level me in front of the boys so I could take him down. He wouldn't do it. <laughs> and then, uh, and then Mike came up and uh, he gave me the biggest hug and he squeezed the life out of me. It was, it was a pretty cool moment. Uh, and he said, no problem, and just walked away like like uh, I was this big fan. <laughs> we had a good laugh about it. Uh, that's such a cool story. So we'll move on to what uh, someone said earlier. You, uh, you, with the contract, you have a six-fight contract. You're three fights deep into the Bellator, and you've got three fights left, uh, two fights left after this. I mean, are you going to re-sign with uh, Bellator, or are you going to leave it as a uh, one contract and done? I'm not really focused on that right now. I'm focused on getting better as a as a professional, as a mixed martial artist. Uh, I love Bellator. They have been nothing but great for me. Uh, you see their roster expanding daily. You see the fights they're putting on are huge, and it's really cool to be part of a growing company. Uh, as for the eyes can see, I believe Bellator. All right. Thank you very much for the time, Jake, and good luck the rest of the week. Hey, thank you, guys.